How much money do you make? That's probably one of the first questions that comes up when someone realizes that I actually make money from a YouTube channel. The problem is, there are a lot of ways to answer that question, even for a small YouTuber like me. And a lot of YouTubers can fudge the numbers either to make it look like they make more money than they actually do, or in a lot of cases, to make it look like they're earning less than they actually are. So I'm going to do this video in three parts. First, I'm going to talk about how much money YouTubers are paid by YouTube. Then I'm gonna dive into my analytics and show exactly how much money my small 27,500 subscriber YouTube channel channel has made, as well as some of the tricks that YouTubers might use to make it look like they're making more than they actually are. And finally, I'll show you the sources of income that YouTubers usually don't talk about in videos like this. So my goal by the end of this video is for you to have a very realistic view of how much money a creator of any size could be making on YouTube. So when most people talk about how much money they make on YouTube, they're referring to their YouTube AdSense. That is money that is paid by advertisers to YouTube in exchange for putting their ads onto different YouTube videos. However much the advertisers pay YouTube, you get 55% of that and YouTube keeps 45% of that. Now because you're getting paid based on the number of ads shown, the more views you get on one of your videos, the more money you're going to make. But that being said, the amount of money that you're going to be paid per view can vary dramatically depending on what you're making your videos on. This is called CPM or cost per mil and it refers to how much advertisers are going to pay per 1,000 ads that they show on your video. Now since YouTube takes a part of that, a lot of people just look at their RPM to see how much money they will actually get paid per 1,000 views on their videos. Now again, your RPM depends strongly on what kind of video you're making. For example, if you're making videos on gaming, your RPM might be one to two dollars per 1,000 views, versus if you're in the personal finance niche, you might be making as much as 10 to 15 dollars for 1,000 views. My personal RPM ranges all the way from around five dollars to as high as 60 dollars on one of my videos where I reviewed Kevin O'Leary's investing app Beanstalks. So not only can the RPM vary between one channel to another, it can also vary between videos within a channel. If I look at my RPM on average over the entire time that I've been monetized, it averages out to around $11. So if you wanted to calculate how much money I made, you could just take my RPM, multiply it by the total number of views that I have, and there you go. You would have the total amount that I made in that time period. So this is the YouTube studio. And if I go in here, I can look at my analytics for the past 28 days. If I do that for my revenue, you can see that over the past 28 days, I've made $225.98 from YouTube. Now, obviously that's not enough money to really live off of, but at the same time, it's a decent amount of money. So you can kind of see by looking at this here that I release about two videos every week. It usually takes me around eight hours to do one of those videos. So if I were to take the amount of time that I spend working on videos in a given month and then divide that into my revenue, I'm only making around $3.50 an hour. Now, again, that's not a complaint to say that I should be making more, but it just goes to show that YouTube is not a get rich quick scheme by any means. You have to put in a lot of work up front. Now, the eagle eyed among you may have noticed that for this 28 day period, my RPM is substantially lower than the average for my channel. And there's a reason for that. It's because I've been experimenting with YouTube paid advertising, which is where you pay YouTube in order to promote your videos and the sidebar of other people's videos. And because of that, I've been getting a lot more views than usual, but those views haven't been monetized. This has resulted in my RPM being really low on the days when those ads are running. Unfortunately, I can't find a way to break out those into a separate category while looking at my RPM. So it's just kind of artificially lowering it for this month. Now I'm not yet ready to talk about the results of that YouTube ad experiment, but I think there's gonna be a pretty interesting video released on it probably in a couple weeks. So this is just for the last 28 days, but now let's change this to look at the lifetime of my entire channel. So if we look here over my channel's entire lifetime, which is from June 2nd, 2020 until now March of 2021, I've made $639.86. Now you'll notice that for the majority of the time I've been making videos on this channel, I haven't been monetized. And that's because I didn't meet the minimum requirements to be monetized, basically a thousand subscribers as well as 4,000 watch hours. That means that all of these videos for these months here, I think it's around six months, didn't make me any money whatsoever. And it wasn't until around December 21st at the end of 2020 that I was finally monetized and I started actually making money off these videos. Now, if I zoom in a little bit here, actually, let me change this to a custom date range, which is easier to see. So this is just looking from December 21st until now. And you'll notice that there's a lot of ups and downs in this revenue. Back in December on one day, I made almost $22 in one day. 
and then in January at one point, I think the lowest I made was under $3 in a day. So that's a huge swing between the highs and the lows. And you can see that even now, there's big swings between the top days and the bottom days, even really, really recently. This is why a lot of YouTubers are very cautious about relying on YouTube as a source of income because it's really not stable in the slightest and you can have huge swings to the upside or the downside on any given day. So you really can't predict how much money you're gonna have in the future. So this is just the aggregate for my entire channel. We can also look at what the top earning videos have been for me on this channel. So the number one video has been this video I made on why you shouldn't blindly trust Kathy Woods, which made over $164. Interestingly enough, that's also the most disliked video on my channel. There were some people who had some very strong opinions about it. But following that up is this other video I made on reviewing Kevin O'Leary's investing app, Beanstalks. Interestingly enough, this particular video doesn't have that many views. It just has a much higher RPM. In fact, if I look at this in more detail, I can actually see all the different videos. And let's say I just click on Kevin O'Leary and compare it to Kathy Woods. And then instead of looking at the estimated revenue, I look at the RPM. You can see here that the Beanstalks video, which is in blue, has gone up and down quite a lot in RPM, but at its peak, it's made almost $60 in RPM. At this point, it made over $60. While the peak of the Kathy Woods video, it was only making $33.92. Now this number here, this $639, is where a lot of YouTubers will leave off and say that's how much money they've been making. But that will overestimate a little bit how much money they actually make because they're forgetting to account for taxes. Now I'm not just talking about normal income taxes that you would pay on a nine to five job. You're gonna pay those too, but there's also an additional tax that you're gonna have to pay called the self-employment tax. You see, normally when you work for a nine to five job, if you check your pay stub, there'll be a line item for social security and Medicare, and it'll be 7.65% of your total income. What you may not realize is that that is only half the amount that's going to the government. The other half is coming directly from your employer for a total of 15.3%. Now, if you're self-employed, like you're running a YouTube channel, that entire 15.3% has to come from you. So for me in particular, working in Illinois, I have to pay that 15.3% plus federal taxes plus state taxes, which comes out to a total tax rate of 44.25%. That means that of that $639, I'm only taking home around $356. And that's not accounting for expenses like buying a microphone, buying a tripod, or buying a computer to actually edit these videos on. But wait, that's not the only source of income for most YouTubers. In fact, for a lot of them, that's not even the primary source of their income. I've seen interviews where YouTubers claim that YouTube AdSense only makes up as little as 10% of their overall earnings. And for some channels that don't have family-friendly content that are often demonetized, it might make up 0% of their total earnings. The real moneymaker for channels, especially ones that have low CPMs, are sponsorships, merch sales, and affiliate links. Now, I don't have any merch, so I can't really speak to how much money people are making from those, but based on how hard some channels such as Logan and Jake Paul back in the day were pushing their merch, I'm willing to guess that that made them the majority of their money during that time period. Another major source of income for YouTubers is sponsorships. And I looked into it and sponsorships can pay anywhere from $40 to $200 CPM. So for example, in one of Mr. Beast's sponsored videos where he has 50 million views, he could be making a million dollars off of a sponsorship in that video. And let's take even a small channel that only gets, let's say 10,000 views per video. They could still be making between $400 and $2,000 in a sponsorship on that one video. Now I personally haven't had any truly paid sponsorships on my channel, but I do have affiliate links. If you look into the description of any of the videos on my channel, you'll see links to different products and services that I think that my viewers might enjoy. For example, I'll link to different investing apps that they might use, as well as different books on Amazon that I'm currently reading. If someone clicks on one of those links and ends up either signing up for the app or buying something on Amazon, I get a small commission in exchange for putting that link in my description. So for example, the top link in the description of this video is to Weeble, where if you sign up and deposit $100, you'll get two free stocks, and then I will also get two free stocks. Now these stocks can vary in value anywhere from $8 to $1,600, but in the time that I've had that link in my description, it's made me $115.16 in total. Similarly, we can look at the link for M1 Finance, where again, if you deposit $100, you'll get $10 back, and then I will also get $10. In total from this link, I've made a total of $310. Finally, the last investing app I leave in the description is Robinhood, and I haven't really made much money from this link, probably because most people are already on Robinhood, so there aren't that many people to refer to it, but I've made $4.78 from this link. And then aside from those investing apps, I also have several Amazon affiliate links in my description. I link to stuff like the tripod I'm recording this on, the microphone that I'm using, as well as several books that I'm reading currently. Now I've made way less money on these links. I've only made $1.80, but I think that's because a lot of the items I link to aren't very valuable, plus they don't really directly appeal to my audience in the same way that an investing platform might. That being said, with Virgin Galactic in the news, I'm currently reading Richard 
Branson's autobiography, and there's a link to that in the description if you want to check it out. That's just a completely and utterly shameless plug. So if we add up all the money from my affiliates, it adds up to $432.19. Now, while this is less than the ad revenue that I've personally made, imagine for a channel that has a CPM that's half of what I have. That would mean that their affiliate links actually make up the bulk of their income. Anytime you watch a YouTuber break down how much money they make from YouTube and they don't mention the money from sponsorships or affiliates, you can pretty much guarantee that they're going to be making substantially more money from those areas than they are from their ad revenue. So in total, I made $432.19 from affiliates plus the $639.86 I made from YouTube AdSense. We'll just use the before tax numbers to try to keep things simple for a total year to date of $1,072.05 with my current subscriber count at 2,762. And that's for two and a half months of earnings ending just before the halfway point in March. So are you surprised? Is that amount higher or lower than you would have guessed? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.